did you move or were you born in Old Orchard Beach? No, I was born northeast of here up in the Lawston area is where I was actually born. And, but, and I moved into the Old Orchard area. Actually, I moved into Biddeford to start with in 1953, the fall of 1953. And then I moved to the town of Old Orchard Beach after I came back from school in September of 1960 when I moved to Old Orchard Beach permanently. Um, do you have any siblings in Old Orchard Beach? In Old Orchard now? No. Or All my siblings are out, out of Old Orchard Beach. Or just any siblings in general? Or uh, of my brothers and sisters, my siblings are all up in the Brunswick Bath area. Okay. Um. I think we need to. Sorry, let's take. Ah, he's that thing. Um. Where did you live in Old Orchard Beach? Uh, in Old Orchard Beach, when I when I <coughs> came back to stay in Old Orchard Beach. I bought a home down on Tunis Avenue, which is down off West Grand Avenue. Okay. My wife and I bought this house, and at the time when we bought it, it was called 8 Tunis Avenue. We bought this house. Okay. And that was in 1962. Yeah, March of 1962. Um, like, uh, childhood, like, in my childhood, Beach. uh, well, I didn't grow up in Old Orchard Beach. I grew up in the, when I, when, as a child, I grew up in the Bath Brunswick area. And, uh, my father owned a grocery store. So my childhood was growing up in a grocery business packing shelves and bagging groceries and helping people with their merchandise to their automobiles and things of that nature. There was, uh, it was a good life. Yeah. Do you, do you have any farm memories of Old Orchard Beach? Be a farm of memories of Old Orchard Beach? Yes. Yes. Uh, I remember one night I was working for the church at the time. It was in the 60s. And all of a sudden, the power, the electricity went out in the Orchard Beach and looked out the door from the St. Margaret's Church. I looked outside and there was one massive fire going on down on the beach where the Grand Victorian Hotel is now, there was a massive fire. Everything was burning. The Velvet Hotel, or was it one of the pier fires? It was with the pier fire at the time. It was what burned, it burned all of that, not the hotel, because it wasn't there, but there was a whole bunch of amusements there. And they burned that whole amusement park down. That was in the 60s. Uh, they, they had another big fire here years before that in the late, late 40s where the wooden roller coaster that used to be here burned down. Now that wooden roller coaster is where today's merry-go-round is in that area. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. What was your favorite ride there at the amusement park? Oh. My favorite ride in the amusement park. Glory sakes alive. I did like to ride the roller coaster. What was it uh, called? 
Um. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but what was the roller coaster called? Just a roller coaster that was uh, uh, just an amusement that was in the uh, in the amusement park down at the time. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. um, do you have? We've heard about uh, there's there was a thing called the donkey mine there. There was a donkey ride there. Oh yes. During that fire that was in the 60s, there used to be a place called Noah's Ark where it was a big ship and down underneath Noah's Ark was what they called the coal mine and used to have donkey rides in this coal mine down underneath and those donkeys Every night, when everything was all done, and they were closing the park up for the night, they would walk those donkeys back up to where the present day fire station is right now. There used to be a barn there, and because that was all farmland up in there, and they'd walk those donkeys up there for the night, and then the next afternoon they'd walk them back down, and they'd have that coal mine ride underneath Noah's Ark and that all burned in that fire of, in the fire that we had in the uh, 60s and I think it was middle 60s somewhere around here. Yeah. Uh, was there any other like rides that we don't have today like? Is there any other rides that we don't have today? I don't, I can't think of anything right off quick, but there must be something because they did change a lot of the rides, but to tell you the truth, I can't remember all what was there. I remember one time that that TV show called Route 66 came to town and they had a ride where the stars of that show rolled around in and that was in the area where today's merry-go-round merry is. It was in that area in there in the Ferris wheel and merry-go-round where they are now. It was in that area and it was one of these rides that started low and then it as it spun around and spun around, it would it would raise itself up way up high and go way out. And they were filming one of those episodes of Route 66 at that time here. What was your favorite um, memory of Old Orchard Beach? My favorite memories of Old Orchard Beach? Yeah. The girl that I fell in love with and married. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were married 60 years before she passed away. Our condolences. But thank you very much. But uh, and she lived right here on Union Avenue, which is just down the street from where we are at now. Graduated from Old Orchard Beach High School in 1955. Yeah, one of my greatest memories or the greatest memory, I should say, really. Oh, did you, um, actually, I think you already answered this. Did you go through the OOB system, uh, the Old Orchard Beach school system? No, no. Yes. I, I actually graduated from Brunswick High School. That's where I graduated from. I migrated <clears throat> down this way in 1953 because in Biddeford they had an engineering trade school that I wanted to go to school. So I came down this way to go to school in Biddeford. There was an engineering trade school called, uh, put on by a 
company called Sokolovo Shops at that time. And when I graduated from there, shortly after graduation, I got married. And my wife and I moved off to Massachusetts to work for a company down there. And what year did you graduate high school? I graduated high school in June of 1953. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh. <clears throat> Question six. Uh, what was your first job in Old Orchard Beach? I never really worked in Old Orchard Beach. <clears throat> but <clears throat> if you want to call it a job, my first job here is when I came back and retired from my actual job, I went to work with the fire department and the police department, helping them around town for things like automobile accidents and fires and stuff like that. It was a volunteer service more than any kind of a paid job at that time. Uh, okay. What other jobs did you have? My whole career was in the engineering field. And I went from <clears throat> engineering and, and working on machinery that was textile machinery to ship building machinery to high-speed automatic machinery to paper mill machinery but I spent my whole life in that field designing and building machinery uh -huh. Orchard Beach during World War II. What was that like? No, no, I didn't live in this area at that time. In World War II, I was a young man and I was living in the, actually living in the Brunswick area. An area, of, well, it was an area of Brunswick called New Meadows. Mm -hmm. That's where I lived. Um. Are there any stories about the history of Old Orchard Beach that you experienced? Stories about the Old Orchard Beach, yeah. Old Orchard Beach, when I first came here in the 50s, there were only probably four or 5,000 permanent residents that lived here in this town. But in the summertime, when we beaches were open and everything, the population in the town of Old Orchard Beach could raise as much as a hundred thousand people. And we would be that many people living in this town because there was all kinds of rental property. And we have an influx from everywhere, New York, uh, Canada, and Boston, all those kinds of places like that. They'd come up from the south, they'd come down from the north, and they were here. Yeah, they, that's why they did call Maine Vacation Land, because... Yeah, yeah, uh, the Vacation Land is right for that reason. Are there any other memories you would like to share with us? Well, yes. There used to be on the... Old Orchard Street, the main street in the town of Old Orchard, called Old Orchard Street, there used to be some old hotels up and down the street. There were nice places to go. They used to have like Saturday night dances there and all that kind of, there was always some kind of a festivity going on up and down the street in Old Orchard. We had, at the, near the bottom of the Old Roger Street, we had a, a man there named Mr. Mo Castle that had a beautiful, beautiful fruit market. It was a nice place. 
I grew up in the fruit market, so I could appreciate it when I came here. It was nice to be able to go there and get a real good piece of fruit like I would see in my own father's store at home. Um, okay. Jim Orchard Beach. That drastically changed throughout your time living here. And have you been affected by it in any way? Some of the things that have drastically changed. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an answer for that, young man. I'm not sure what has dress, what, what I can say has drastically changed. The thing that probably most drastically changed is that the population has increased here in Owatchet. From when I first came here, like I said, there was probably four to five thousand permanent residents. We probably got closer to 9,000 today, permanent residents. Well, doubled. Um, let's take out the drastically, anything that changed throughout your time living here. It doesn't have to be big, it could be a small shop closed down. A tattoo place is, back then, was, is now a fruit place. Or something. Yeah. Well... <clears throat> Yeah, one thing they did do is took the bell out of the bell tower in the town hall. That bell, if you go into the town hall and you see that bell sitting on the floor near the clerk's office, that used to be up in the tower. Why did they take it down? I don't know why they took it down, but a friend of mine who's now deceased had, he and I were one of the last few people who ever rang that bell. Oh. Yeah. It was one of the, Charlie and I were one of the last few people that rang the bell in the bell tower at the town hall. Wow. Hmm? I, I did not know that. Oh. I wonder why they still call it a bell tower with full bell. Oh, it'll always be a bell tower. Because that's the way it's built. It's like the bell tower on the church. The, there's no longer any chimes or bell up in there, but there's still a bell tower on St. Margaret's Church. It's uh, or a victim of any catastrophic events in Old Orchard Beach? And has it affected you in any way? A witness? Like the fire. Uh, well, other than witnessing the big fires, yes. That I witnessed. And the way that that affected me in the 60s, I can remember, was that I was living down on Tunis Avenue at the time. And they had to pump so much water through the pipelines to fight that fire that my house on Tunis Avenue, we had rusty water from our spigots for about a week before it cleared up. And that was because pumping so much water through the lines so quickly Disturbed a lot of rust in those old iron pipes. But other than that, that fire was devastating. It was all because of the negligence of someone who, according to the fire inspectors, put some kind of a coin behind a fuse because the fuse kept burning out and they didn't want to keep burning fuses so they put some kind of a metal disc 
behind it to make the circuit continue and it overheated and that's what set the fire. Right, uh, I know there's been multiple fires in uh, Orchard Beach. Have you witnessed the 60s fire? Have you witnessed any more? Oh yeah, I've been to a few of them. We had, we had a fire that burned the old Americano Motel down at the end of Heath Street. And at that time I was working with the fire department and the police department as traffic and crowd control. And I was at that fire. We had, uh, oh, the grass fire that was down on East Grand Avenue. I would, I attended that particular fire. The fire, we had a big fire on East Grand Avenue, a building fire uh, across the street from where the Grand Victoria is in that area now. And that was a quite a large building in there. And uh, I attended that, you know, but I was working with the fire and police department as traffic and crowd control at the time. So I observed those fires, yes. I don't know, I can't think of any more right off quick. Uh, as an adult, do you still feel that way? Oh yes, I like living here in Olachi Beach, yes. And staying, well, like I said, <clears throat> I married a girl and we stayed here and we finally sold our property down on the beach on Tunis Avenue and built ourselves a new home up on Milliken Mills Road in Old Orchard Beach. And uh, we're still in Old Orchard Beach and I, yes, I like being here. It's, it's a nice town. I find no fault with it. I might great once in a while about this or that, but everything seems to be good. My street gets plowed good for me every day, and well, once in a while my mailbox gets knocked down, but that's, <laughs> we can fix that. My dad used to get so Yeah, bad. but uh, uh, my street gets plowed and that sort of thing, and I do have a fire hydrant that's only about 60 feet away from my house, so... <laughs> If anything burns down, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yes, I like living in Olachi Beach. This is my home. My children, our children, grew up here. Both graduated from Olachi Beach High School. Yeah. Uh, do you? What was one of your favorite things to do in Olachi Beach? My favorite thing to do in Old Orchard Beach. Well, I did like to go to the beach, even though I wasn't a big beacher. I did like to go to the beach. Uh, I used to like to wander around downtown, walk down around town, see all the tourists, uh, that sort of thing like that. That's Um, do you have any hobbies that you like to do on Orchard Beach? Well, yeah. the, the, the hobby that I had was woodworking. I do have a good woodworking shop in the basement of my house right now. And I build all kinds of different things. I've built me a music center. I built a, a big boat. And made it into a music center. I built me a wall to go in my bathroom. And I built things for my daughters, and my wife. 
my wife used to like to have shoes, and I built her a shoe box so that she could put her 30 or 40 pairs of shoes in. And my daughter built one for her also, with probably as many holes. Uh, do you have a favorite thing to do on Ooh? Or watch the beach? Like, um... Favorite what? Thing? Yeah, like a favorite object or something. If, if I had a favorite thing, it would probably be cruising around town. I, I spend time cruising around town because I try to be, with, with my association with the police and fire department, I try to be an extra set of eyes and ears for the police and fire department. So I'm, I move about town quite a lot, around town quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, no, it's not still here. I used to like to hang out in the roller skating rink. We had a roller skating rink on Staple Street Extension on the right side, headed toward the beach, headed toward the water. There was a roller skating rink in there. Even though I couldn't roller skate very, very good, I used to like to hang out there and watch people skate and all that. <clears throat> and occasionally, they would have what they called wrestling matches at that roller skating rink. They'd bring in these, uh, what they call, what they call them, WWE style uh, wrestlers, and they'd have wrestling matches at that roller skating rink. But my wife was very, very good at roller skating, so she liked it, and I liked it, even though I was not not good at it at all. Mm, uh, was it like roller derby, where people run around and No, it wasn't roller derby, but they all did. Yeah, they circled, they roller skated in a circle. And they had what they called the floor monitors, so that if you were acting up or disturbing somebody with the way you were roller skating, they would speak to you. And if you were real bad and nasty, you may get ejected. I can just imagine some big bouncer on roller skates. <laughs> well, they weren't. Truly, they weren't big bouncers. They were just people who were <clears throat> really good at skating so that they could catch up with anybody that was disturbing people or that sort of thing in a backwards, frontwards, whatever. They could catch them. Uh. Well, the, 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 the big landmarks were like those nice old hotels that we had in the on the main old Lodgett Street, Main Street itself, the main drag itself, those were uh, places from way, way back in the early years because people used to come here in the early years, they'd come by ship north or from the north, from the south, because the pier at one time was about as twice as long as it is today. It was way, way, way out there, at least a thousand feet out. And it had a little miniature railroad on it where the ships would pull up, people would disembark, and that little railroad would bring them to the mainland. And people would come and stay here all summer long. They would come to visit in Old Orchard and stay all summer long, be it whether they came from the north or from the south. Yeah, that was uh, one of the big things that was here that no longer here. That that pier itself was a lot, lot longer than it is today. And we had three or four 
that I can remember of real bad storms that took uh, pieces of the pier down when the, when the storm broke, hurricanes and all that. Uh, do you miss being a kid? That's one of the questions. Do you miss being a kid? No. Nah. I don't know if I could miss being a kid, but I miss being a lot younger. I would, I would love to have stopped aging about 50 or 60 years old rather than today, but, you know, you kinda... I, as, a, as a young man and as a kid, young kid, I, I, my duties were to work in my father's grocery store. Packing shelves, bagging groceries, helping people get them to the to their vehicle, those kinds of things. Uh, you kind of already answered this, but uh, what did the pier look like when you were growing up? When I first came here in 1948, I came on a vacation in 1948, and the pier was at least twice as long as it is today, and it had already been shortened, but it was at least twice as long, and they used to have a great large ballroom on the end of it, and they'd have dancers there, and they had big bands that came there, like Glenn Miller and, and Louis Armstrong, and those kinds of big bands would come and play at the pier, and at one time, I saw Louis Armstrong here, but he didn't play at the pier that time. He had, there was a building on West Grand Avenue, and it was across the street from uh, where the Americana Hotel is today. There was a big brick building in there, and I remember watching Louis Armstrong in that building. They had a, it was a, I think it was a three-story building and they had a great large uh, gathering or auditorium, if you will, on the second floor. And I remember watching Louis Armstrong there. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything else I'd like to share? Yes. If anybody is looking for a place to come to live, that you can live comfortably and be left alone when you don't want to be bothered, Old Orchard Beach is a good place to live. I think you young men, when you grow up, if you stay here until you become adults, big adults, you will realize that this is some of the best times of your life in this town. We are a small town, but we're a good town. We have good people here. We have good people here. Uh, we have some extra. Oh, are you done? Okay. We have some extra questions, if you don't mind, if you still... Sure, go ahead. What else you got, young man? Uh, did you ever go to any of the concerts at the ballpark or the pier? Yes. I saw Cher at the ballpark one night. We went there to the ballpark and the concert there. That was quite some, quite an experience. Right in this building, the Laranja School, where we're at right now, you got a big organ in here. Oh, yeah. They played and it. we used to have some nice concerts here. We had an organist that I don't know whom it was or who it was, but we had an organist that would come in and play, and we had some nice concerts right here in this building. It was, at that time, this was Old Orchard Beach High School, not, the, not, the junior high school. It was the high school before they built a new one when that organ 
got the party in. Yeah. Uh, were you here when the famous big bands played? Which band was your favorite? Uh, the the no, I really wasn't here when the famous big bands came, but uh, like I said. The only one that I really saw was Louis Armstrong, but that was years and years later. Uh, and uh, other than that, but I've been told bands like Glenn Miller Band played out on the pier, and and uh, oh, I uh, can't think of the name of the other ones. There was a number of them that used to come here. This was this was a known spot to come for the summertime for these big bands, and they would come and play. They had that big banquet place at the at the end of the pier. Uh, any of the horse races at the kite track? No. No, I never went in there at all. I never got to the kite track at all. That, I, I think it was still operating when I first came here in the 50s, but I never, never went to the kite track. Uh, have you met any famous people that have come to visit Orchard Beach? Who would have been famous that I would have met that came to work? No, I can't say that I have, that I can think of anybody, no. Um, have you seen the Dummy Railroad? I, did you ever ride on it? No, I never rode the Dummy Railroad, but I owned a strip of land one time. It was where the Dummy Railroad went by. The house that I owned on Tunis Avenue there was a 20-foot wide strip of land, it's what they call the Dummy Railroad, went down from, and the Dummy Railroad started from uh, Union Avenue and went all the way to Camp Ellis. Yeah, went all the way to Camp Ellis. And that, they, had, they had a 20-foot wide, wide railroad that was down there that I finally purchased that piece of land that abutted my land on Tunis Avenue. Oh, but I never rode it, and it wasn't there at the time. And I got that piece of land from the town of Owatchee Beach. They owned it at the time I got it. Uh, were you on the beach when any of the planes landed? Yes. Yes. I One of, one of my... Uh, details with the fire and police department. Uh, this was like two, three years ago when he had that, two years ago I think when the young walker boy had the fly-in. They, they, the planes came in and landed. One of my details was to be on the beach crowd control so to speak working with the police and fire department at the time. And we had quite a few airplanes. I think there was 21 or 22 planes come in, but that's all the 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 that's all they would allow. I think there was more scheduled, but they wouldn't allow them to come in. Uh, what do you mean the young young Walker boy? He was the one who uh, three years ago. I think it was three years ago. Charlie Walker, who is the plumber here in town, son, who, in fact, I think he graduates from Owatcha this year. Yeah. He graduates this year. Mm -hmm. He was the one who put this whole thing together so that they could bring the airplanes in. This was the one three years ago. The airplanes that came in before, my mother-in-law was telling me when she watched Lindbergh land his plane on the beach. But that was in the 20s. Yeah. Uh,
Even your birthday is an allergic beach. Mm. Birthday is an allergic beach. Quietly, so to speak. Yeah. I would have... Uh, I, I was... Uh, have a little small, quiet birthday party with me and my immediately family, mostly. It wasn't something where we invited a lot of people to come, but yeah, my wife and children and my in-laws, and we have a little family gathering for each one of us at birthday times. Uh, did you ever go to any dances in the ballroom? At the pier, no. No, never went to a dance in the ballroom. When, when the big dances were there, I was 14, 15 years old when I'd come to visit. I didn't live here totally at that time, but I came to visit. And you weren't allowed to go there until you were more of an adult, 18 hmm. plus. So. Uh, what were the restaurants like downtown? What were the restaurants like downtown? You know, I really can't say because I never did uh, patronize the restaurants downtown. Uh, if, if anything, I might have stopped at a hot dog stand or something like that, or uh, one of the pizza stands, like Bill's Pizza. Bill's Pizza's been there forever, or Pia Fries, and got something like that. But as far as going into a restaurant as we know them today, like uh, JJ's or Stripe Zone or one of them kind of things there, uh, I didn't, I didn't go to those places. Um, I this is a rumor, but I heard that. Uh, back then, a lot, some kids burnt down. It was either the high school or the middle school. Is yeah. that is that true? The, yeah. Um, it used to be middle school just down toward the, uh, the other primary school below us here. There was a yes, it got burned down, and. Uh, Two or three young men served time for it. Did you know them? No, I didn't know. I know who they are because I didn't know them now, know who they are, but I didn't know them, no. They were local boys from town here. They grew up here in town. And what inspired them to burn the schoolhouse down beyond me? And one of the young men his father was a policeman, and he caught, caught, went to jail, spent a couple of years or whatever it was. I don't know what the term was, but uh, there was, there were three, I think, that were accused of being involved, and how many actually served time? I know this one man did, the man today, uh, but I don't know whether the other two that I understood were involved served time or not. But. Did the dad try to cover for the son since no, he was a cop? No, no, he didn't. You did it, son, you take the, you do, you do, you, you did the crime, you do the time. That's what my dad says. Hmm? Yeah, he says, he, he uh, is there any, or, uh, we have zero questions left, so I'm going to ask you this. Is there anything that you would like to share about Orchard Beach, any hidden things? Mm, they can be so small, you may think they, have, they really don't matter, but it's like anything hidden that we, most people don't know about, about Orchard Beach. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, the like I said earlier, uh, I think it's a wonderful place to live and grow up, bring up your children. I I, I think Owatonna Beach, got, even though it's a small school, I think it's got a good school system. You you get what you get out what you put into it, but I think you can get a good education going through the school here in Owatonna Beach. I know that both of my daughters got tremendous educations working uh, through the school system here. Oh, did your daughters teach or go to school here? Oh yes, uh, my oldest daughter now is is a, she's a teacher. She's a special education teacher. She went to school here, graduated, went off to Farmington to go to college in Farmington. And now she's teaching school out in Michigan. She's on a she she's in a public school that is on an Indian reservation out in Michigan, and she has a, a special education that she's teaching out there. My other daughter, the younger my younger daughter, works with uh, people that need help doing all kinds of different things. Uh, she, she takes uh, the young adults actually, or, uh, and she'll take them, show them how to do banking, take them to the grocery store, show them how to do shopping, or just spend time with them. She has, <laughs> two or three clients. She had one client in particular who likes to go to all the benefit football games. So she has to take him to the football games. He goes to, he goes to uh, like Burger King first and has his supper and then they go to the football games. Things of that nature. Those are, they, they grew up here in town, graduated from high school from the high, from the or watch Beach High School. The younger one went off to be a travel agent. She went off to school to become a travel agent. She only worked at that for a short period of time before she changed fields and went into something else. What she's into today, in fact. Did you have two daughters or three? Yes, two daughters. We had two daughters. Yep. Well, unless there's anything else you'd like to add, well, Oh. Well, I can't think of anything right now. You know, I, uh, but let me reiterate again. Well, it should be a nice place to live. I like it here. I don't think I'd move someplace else. They'd have to make it very, very, very awful. No, no, they'd have to be very, very good to make me move someplace else. Even though I'm all alone in my house. But last summer I wasn't alone and I had a young man live with me that was a summertime police officer last year. Yeah, he worked for the police department here in Owatchin and he lived with me for three months. He just might want to come back, I don't know, and if he does, I think my heart is open to let him come. Um, where were you born? I was born in Toronto, Canada, and I moved to the United States when I was 11 years old. What was your childhood like in Old Orchard? Well, I wasn't here when I was a child, so I can't tell you that but I can tell you what it was like in Toronto, Canada, where I grew up. I went to, um, I lived in a very um, populated neighborhood with lots of mixed um, English speaking, French speaking people. Um, I went to school there up until I moved to the United States when I was uh, around 12 years old. What is your favorite memory in Old Orchard? Well, when I moved to Old Orchard, I was mar I got married, and my husband and I were the first Salvation Army officers 
located here in Old Orchard. We opened the Salvation Army work here in Old Orchard and we were here for four years. And I decided when I wanted to retire that I would move back to Old Orchard because it's such a wonderful place to live and to have your family. So that's how I got back here, uh, was to retire. And uh, when I moved back to Old Orchard, I was offered the position of assistant town manager for the town of Old Orchard. And that's what I do today for a living. How much was your pay? Uh, when, I, when I moved to Old Orchard, well, I was a Salvation Army officer, so they don't get paid a lot of money. But I was provided a place to live. I lived over in the campgrounds. And uh, I don't even remember how much it was. I think back then it might have been $125 a week, which was very little back then. But they did provide me a house to live in. All right, so I understand you work for United Technologies. What did you do there? Did you get to travel? I traveled all over the world. I was very fortunate. I was the executive assistant to the chairman of the board, and it's a multinational corporation, so they have operations in all over the world, uh, including Otis Elevator and Sikorsky Helicopter and Hamilton Standard. So there were many operations within United Technologies. I got to go to um, Belgium, uh, Paris, uh, London, I'm trying to think where else it was a long time ago, but got to travel a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a lot because when you're an executive assistant, you're kind of stuck in the office wherever you're going, whether it's at a hotel or something. You're taking phone calls and you're writing memos and that kind of thing. But at least I can say that I visited these countries and I got a couple magnets to put on my refrigerator, so that was good. What are your hopes for Old Orchard's future? I'd like it to continue to be in the winter time, particularly, or the fall and winter uh, family community. I'd like to see the downtown grow. I'd like, I would love to see some of the businesses stay open uh, year round. That's rather difficult because of the population that we have. But there have been some uh, businesses on the main street that have stayed operational for the whole year. And I think that's one of the things that would build the community. Um, I think we have a great government in Old Orchard Beach. I work for the a town manager, as you know, I'm the assistant town manager. But he's excellent. He's brought a lot of uh, professionalism to the town. I'd like to see that con uh, continue. We have a great town council uh, that the people have elected. I'd like to see them continue to elect those kind of people to serve them. Did you ever go to any dances in the ballroom? I didn't. I, I'm old, but not quite that old. Those were probably in the 20s, 1920s or 1930s, and I wasn't born until 1936. But I've seen pictures of it, and they're exciting. And I guess mobs of people would go down there. The other thing about the, um, the pier, it was twice as long as it is now, which uh, meant that there were a lot of uh, stores and shops and businesses on the pier that time, which we don't have today. I'd like to see that come back. Have you met any famous people that have come to visit OLB? Well, um, one of my positions when I moved here was I was hired by the Salvation Army to build the pavilion. I don't know if you've ever been to the pavilion. Mm -hmm. It's a 1400 seat amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And so they hired me to put that up. So I was there for five years. And during that time, I had President Mrs. Bush come to the pavilion. I had a lot of musical artists come. I had Senator Howard Baker, who I worked for when I was younger. He came to the pavilion. So yeah, a lot of good, popular people. A lot of artists, musical artists, that performed there. So it was a very exciting job. Have you seen the Dummy Railroad? Did you ever ride on it? No, I didn't. I've seen pictures of it. Um, but I do remember uh, back in the late 70s that Amtrak, which is in our town now, uh, didn't come through very often. It wasn't a 
a, a weekly or a daily activity. Once in a while you'd see a train go through. And I can remember when I first moved here that I'd stay awake at night because I'd hear the whistle blow. Now I don't even hear it. And I laugh when people come and for the summer and they say, oh, all I hear is the train whistle. I laugh at that because if they were here long enough, they wouldn't hear it anymore. It just becomes part of your daily living. You just get so used to you it. You get so used to it that you don't even hear it anymore. Do you miss being a kid? Uh, when I see the students here today, I do. Um, I've been very impressed with what I've seen here at Laranja School. I can't believe how mature you are. Um, and I look at my own children and I wonder if they had the maturity that you have when they were young. I don't think so, but I'm very impressed. Yesterday I was interviewed by three individuals like you, and again I was very impressed by the way they handled it. You don't seem the least bit nervous or concerned, and I think that says a lot about you and the way you were raised, and I compliment your parents. What? was or is one of your favorite things to do in the larger? I like to go downtown during the summer months. I like to see the different people that come to Old Orchard. I sit on the bench down in the square and I listen to them. I also enjoy the musical activities when the Salvation Army is here during the month of end of July and August. They have a lot of musical programs down there. I like to go and listen to them. It's always inspiring and also they have dancers and a lot of different kinds of music, so that's what I like to do. What year, what year did you graduate high school from? I graduated from John Marshall High School in 1954, and that was in Rochester, New York. Um, so I know that you're the assistant town manager. What exactly do you do? Well, I do a lot of different things. I uh, am a secretary to the town council. So when the town council meets, I take the minutes of the meeting. And those are historical records so that when you get to be my age, you'll be able to go back and see what the town council did last night at their meeting. Uh, that's one of my bigger duties. I assist the town manager. Um, I go to meetings. Last week I went to a meeting at Ferry Beach about the J-1 students, that, those are the international students that will be coming this summer to work in Old Orchard. Um, I also take a lot of phone calls, some of them are complaints. Um, the Public Works Department knocked on my um, mailbox, um, I need to have you put it back up, those kind of things. So those are the kind of things I do in my job. I love it. I have a lot of interaction with the citizens in Old Orchard, and they're kind and they're generous, and they're sort of like you. They are very um, welcoming, and you feel very comfortable with them. I understand you're involved with um, the Community Animal Watch. How did you get involved with that? Well, I got involved because of my job as assistant town manager, but I have to tell you that I love animals. I have a dog. It's a chihuahua. Uh, it's called Little Handsome, uh, and when I was looking for a dog, I told the, uh, because it was a rescue, I said, I want a dog, but I don't want a chihuahua. So when I went to pick up the dog, it turned out to be a chihuahua, and he is the most loving dog you've ever seen in your life. I wouldn't trade him for any other kind of dog. I really do love him. I also have three cats, uh, Black Beauty, uh, Jelly Bean and uh, Casper. So um, I, I'm an animal lover and that's how I got involved because through the town we set up a committee for Animal Watch and they do a wonderful job and people can contribute money or canned dog and cat food to help those who perhaps can't afford to feed their animals. So anybody watching this, please feel free to come to Town Hall and either donate some items or donate some cash to buy those kind of items. What is your biggest accomplishment or what are you most proud of? I guess, uh, to be honest, raising of my three children uh, on my own. Um, I have a, two sons and a daughter. Uh, 
two of my children are adopted. Um, I've seen what they've become, and along with my son, and I'm proud of them. Uh, my daughter is from Korea, and my son uh, was three years old when we adopted him. And uh, they all have families. They have good jobs. So I think I must have done something half right anyway, and I'm probably most proud of them. I'm also proud of um, the many jobs that I've had because it's they've all been different, and I feel that I've contributed to each one. And I, um, when I ret when I do retire, I think I will have a good feeling about the contribution that I made. And I think that's important for young people as they get older is to realize that everything they do they're accountable for and when they get older they can look back and be proud of what they've done and what they've given to their community and to their family. Were there any big landmarks that people may not know about today that you may like to share? Well I think they may know about them but um, I, I think the way that Old Orchard has developed over the years is a landmark. Uh, when you think of two, uh, uh, 1907, uh, Old Orchard was completely destroyed by a fire, and they rose up out of the ashes. And look at what they've become today, a uh, great community, great schools, great kids. Uh, I think we have a lot to be proud of, and I think that's a landmark in itself. I also think that the educational system has developed over the years. Uh, this is something that we're doing today that I don't ever remember doing in my generation, and uh, it's encouraging and exciting, and so I think there are a lot of landmarks. What exactly did you do before becoming the town manager? Assistant town manager, but I have been, by the way, I have been um, acting town manager three times when our town managers have either left to take another position, so I have had a little experience, but I'm happy to be the assistant town manager. Uh, what did I do before that? Um, I, as I told you, I built the Salvation Army Pavilion for the Army and ran it for five years. And then 24 years before that, I worked as the executive assistant to the chairman of United Technologies, which is a multinational corporation. And I also served as the um, uh, shareholder relations person that dealt with people who wanted to buy stock in United Technologies. And before that, uh, again, I was a Salvation Army officer here in Old Orchard. So it goes back a lot of years. How do you think we've done today? I think you've done wonderful. I think this is exciting. I, when it was suggested by Pat Brown that we do this kind of exercise, I thought, oh, I wonder how the students will think about it. I wonder how they'll react to us. I wonder how we'll react to them. And I think it's been very helpful. I think you're wonderful. Um, I'm so shocked at your professionalism. I guess I shouldn't be, but maybe I haven't had enough to do with the younger generation. But you're, uh, what I've seen in the last two days here are professional students who think beyond the book, uh, great teachers, a great school system. So I think it's a great idea, and I hope they continue it next year as well. And thank you all for your participation. Hi, so was it through Arlene and Fred that I met yeah, you? Yeah, I think it was about eight years ago, actually, at okay. School Street. Because they were very involved in not only animals, but I yeah. think in other things. They would come to council meetings oh, yes. and speak on issues. I think Politics. that's how I got to know them very well. Right. Yeah. right. And that's how I got to know you too. Yeah. Okay. That was a and good day. They they brought me into yeah. uh, community animal yeah. watch. Right. Because I I was uh, trying to get help for a dog that lived at the apartment building where I lived, and I called Will Watson and um, I spoke to him and he suggested that I go to a meeting of community animal watch and request help from them uh, for the dog because uh, the woman I was. Uh, dog sitting the dog the woman was in rehab and the dog was in terrible condition needed uh, an awful lot of help so I, I went to community animal watch to get the help for the dog and since then I've been getting help for dogs lots, and cats, lots of dogs and cats. <laughs> yeah. plus placing 
dogs and cats in homes, which has been a great thing because yeah. Yeah. Um, Old Orchard has more issues with cats than yeah. they do with dogs. Definitely. Definitely. It's not as difficult to find a home for a dog than it is for cats, don't no, you think? No, not only that, but uh, the fact is true that in most towns in Maine, an animal control officer doesn't have to bother with a cat. No. You might call right. them if you have a lost cat. But, but they don't. But, no. you know, they don't. They, it's like in Berwick. Uh, the, uh, people know, don't even bother to call because they don't want to lost think cat. That, I do think that how Beverly and I worked together well was if there was a cat or dog missing, she would call me up and we would send out a press release right. uh, and get it all over. And there are so many people that have signed up through the town for notices that whether they yeah. liked it or not, they got the notice about a missing cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Beverly was able to find lost animals a lot. Right, you know, right. And there wasn't anything that made me happier than when I got an email back from her. Don't send it out anymore. We found the cat or we found the dog. <laughs> so, that was good. And it always made me so happy yeah. to find one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or, or have somebody call me because mm -hmm. there was a stray in their yard and find the owner of that stray. Or get and, it then, to the and then we had a very unique experience when there was a fire at the uh, School Street uh, location and we had a many animals. How many? Oh God, there was 20 some 20 some like animals. 20. And we put the people up, the town did, in the Holiday Inn. Yeah. And I remember going Hampton over. Inn. Mm -hmm. Hampton Inn. Hampton Inn. Hampton yeah. Inn. And I remember going over and speaking with the woman at the counter and saying, you know, they have animals. And they let us bring all those animals. And I remember once Larry Mead and I were going over to have a meeting in the morning because we went over every day to check on things. And as we're walking in the Hampton Inn, I look up on the second floor and there's a cat up there going <laughs> like that. And I said to Larry, that's good advertising for the Hampton Inn. <laughs> you know that you know that Marette was on the second floor and she had five cats, cats there with her. <laughs> the Hampton Inn, the actually I, let her bring I really, five they did. Cats. They let them bring the cats, yeah. oh, the they dogs. Were, they were wonderful. Yeah. And the birds. And the bird. Yeah. 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 They were great yeah. to us. They were. Yeah. I think even the snakes and snails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember the yeah. lady? <laughs> That was quite an, that was quite an experience, yeah, yeah. really. And I, I, I should correct that about Berwick because I've seen now the Berwick Police Department actually posts pictures of, of yes. lost cats on, nice. their, on their page. So, um, you know, things have progressed. Got better, yeah. Well, I think, I think with advertising and press releases and that, I think they almost feel compelled that they, the public is interested in this and yeah. they need to take more of a yeah. person. People but we've been fortunate. Uh, Will Watson has been helpful and, yeah. and certainly Dana Kelly, our chief, has pushed the pushed the envelope. So which has been good, don't you think? Yeah. So. Um, oh, that's good. I can take that back to the yeah. So um yeah um what year did um you move or were you born in oob uh no i was born in Bitterford. you want the year i hate to give it to you but i was um or what year did you move to oob uh in 1942. um do you have any siblings oh yes how many uh five not left. Now there's only two of us. Um, so, how many years have you lived in LLB? Well, since 1942, and this is what, two more years? Oh, 19. Yeah. Figure out when you think I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you still live in LLB? Yeah. Oh, no, now I'm in South Okay. okay. Like, how long have you been there? Assisted living since August. Eight months. Eight months. So, um, do you have any siblings? Yes. Living, look, you want the ones that are dead too? <laughs> <laughs> um, living, I guess? Think of that. Living? Uh, two, just myself, and I have one brother living, because I have a lot of nieces and nephews. That's it, there were six of us.
Yeah. And there's only two left. Um, did you go through the OOB school system? Oh, yes. Hold on to feet from the fifth grade or think of fifth or sixth grade on. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the fires that happened either oh, on the yes. pier? Oh, yes. I do. I remember one, two, possibly three. Not the first one, but the uh, big one. Born. The next one I knew was in, I can't remember what year it was. The big one in 69. When the, when the, when the, the uh, pier went. 69? In 1969, the pier burnt down. I saw that one. And I saw the last one. So I saw them both. So what was it like to watch the pier burn down? It was sad. Yeah. Because when I was young, I used to go dancing there. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of music did you dance to? Oh, anything. Yeah. So, um, what is your favorite memory of living in OOB? Well, I guess you'll say they're all good. They were all very nice. A lot of friends, nice parents, nice home. No complaints. Always something going on. Yeah. Of course, in the summertime, we were very busy. But oh, in the wintertime, it was like a funeral parlor. There was nobody there. They all went back to where they lived. And we had a lot of Canadian people. They would come for the summer. And a lot of the people, when they would leave, they would wave goodbye. They wouldn't wave goodbye. I felt bad when they left because I like a lot of people. The more, the merrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you were a teenager, did you have a job here? Yes, sir. In, in Old Orchard. Yeah. Yes. I worked in the five and ten. Pelletiers on on Main Street had a big five and ten. And I worked there and I did a lot of babysitting. Did you like it? Oh, Your job? Yes. Oh, yes. After that five and ten I stayed in retail for forty nine years. It's a lot about the um, OOB history that like you've experienced that um, you could share with us. At the uh, what did you say at the light at way at the like, school? Like um it'll be like history, like anything. Like um no, we weren't as fortunate as you kids. We were very low key. <laughs> <laughs> you got computers and <coughs> it was a, there was forty nine uh, seniors and we graduated in nineteen forty nine. What else can I think of? Basketball manager. Because <laughs> I didn't know what this was. <laughs> always in every kind of a play or any kind of a concert. I was there. I didn't miss anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any big landmarks that people may not know about today um, that you'd like to share? Oh, yes. Quite a few big hotels in the old Georgia. Beach House was right on Soccer Lab, and it was a very elegant place. People would come in the summertime, and they didn't have as many cars as we have today. So they had uh, taxis. They came in a taxi, and they put their luggage in, and away they'd go, and maybe stay for two weeks or so. Mostly Canadians, and they were very, very nice. Yeah, got a lot of girls. Of course, the whole, the original, not the original, Pier, but the second pier, which is all of that, so all the big bands playing, very enjoyable. And uh, the school is a play, uh, place for seniors to live on School Street in Old Orchard. And when I we first moved to Old Orchard, that was a school when we went to school there. Now it's a uh, home for seniors. That it was a lovely old school building. From grade one, one to six, I think. Mm -hmm. And we came up here to the Oh, the school burned down that was Oh, yeah. How did you meet him? Uh -huh. <coughs> I had a friend, a very good friend, who was in school in Georgia. And she got very sick and she had to drop out of school. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So uh, I knew her very well. I went up to see her one night to see how she was doing. She right. Was, uh, and when I went in there, Emerson was in there. 
with a talk and she said she wasn't going to go back to school as much. She was too far behind. And he said to me, can you get some books if I, I tell you what I need? And I said, yes. And he made me a list of books and he said, bring them up here. And uh, he said, we'll talk with her. I met him through that day. And, slaves in uh, Mississippi, and a gentleman uh, had a son in Mississippi, and he fell in love with this beautiful girl, good looking, she was a slave, and the Ku Klux Klan came to them and said, take your word we don't use, right. you know, <laughs> the and get out of here. He said, no, I'm not leaving, my wife is here, I'm not leaving. The next night, the Ku Klux Klan came and they burned him alive at the stake. And they had seven children. So uh, the mother took the seven children, came through the uh, Underground Railroad, and then the family spread around to different places. And my son worked very hard to go to college because they wouldn't accept African Americans. Right. But he went to Bates College and it took him about six or seven years because they didn't want biracial children. Right. He didn't have the money. He, uh, and he was, then he, he, he went to MIT in Boston and uh, something in New Hampshire College in New Hampshire. But um, when he went to Old Orchard, uh, he and Mr. LaPelletier, do you remember Jerome LaPelletier? No. He was a, pr you, oh, of course you would. <laughs> it was your father, John, no, your father was. My uncle, John. Your uncle, Uncle John helped to write the book about it. Mr. Yes, Jim. I have it. He, he wrote a beautiful, they got it from Bates College. Yes. yes. But he went. Mother? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, but when Emerson went to get a job teaching in Old Orchard, he and Mr. Pelletier came together, they were friends, and they told uh, Emerson they couldn't hire him because there was no blacks in, in teachers. Wow. And they said, but Mr. LaPelletier, you have a job. He said, we came together and we're going together. If you don't give him the job, I give him the job. And Emerson told the superintendent, give me a job for two weeks and I guarantee you, you'll keep me. He ended up, I don't know how many times he got teacher of the year, kids, you know that. Kids love him. He worshiped his kids. And, <laughs> He could have gone to teach old uh, college students because his idea of a good time was sitting and reading the math book. Can you imagine? <laughs> a math book. And, um, but he stayed in Old Orchard until he and Mr. McSweeney went. When they retired, they did uh, work around. Now, Mr. Mr. Uh, McSweeney couldn't. They went and did the uh, lunches, and uh, Emerson could talk well, but he didn't see well, and Johnny, okay, you know, he did, but anyhow, they used to deliver the meals and go in and sit down and talk with the people, and one day, Johnny McSweeney said, I've got to go out and get something in the car. He says, I'll be right back after you, and Emerson says, okay, I'll keep talking to you. 
hour later, Johnny wasn't there. He thought, I better, I better start walking home. He was on the way home on his car, drove up. The guy says, hey, Emmy, you want to ride home? You're darn right I do, he says. Where did you go? He said, I don't know, where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> they went, they got lost in Ocean Park, the two of them. The police had to go find them as, as they got old. <laughs> but they had things. I think one of the nicest things that I can remember what he did, he had a, they had a rooming house in Old Orchard, and just the uh, African Americans, they know they they know that part, how they, you know, and uh, after the family dwindled away down, he took over the house. Well, we had some people come from Buffalo, friends of mine, and they stayed at the big, we call it the big houses on Portland Avenue, and uh, they stayed there for a week or so. When it came time to leave, when they left, I went upstairs to help them clean the house and everything out, you know, we did what they had to do. And uh, there was a check on the table. It was made out to Emerson, a good healthy check, more than he would have, you know, charged them. So he kept saying to him, they don't want, he doesn't want it. I don't want it. No, I'm not, I don't trust him. And, and the one of the women says, oh, she says, I forgot something upstairs. She went back up and uh, when Emerson came down, the check was there. So he said, they wanted me to have it, but I'm gonna do something about that. He went over, he hired a bus. He went over to Ocean Park and took all the senior citizens, brought them up to the high school in the bus for a concert. The organ that's in the high school, is it still there? It's here in middle school. There's a big this middle. is the high school, this the old high school. Yeah. So it's here. It yes. Was, was, is the organ still yes, here? Yes, it is. He went to New York and bought that organ and had it brought back here so the kids in the world could learn about music. Now, what else? You know, because those days, you know, I'd just turn around and stare back at him. But he, was, he was too gentle for man to do. <laughs> but he was a great friend of your uncle, wasn't he? Yes. John. Yes. And they did a book on him. Uh, his life right from the time his grandfather was killed. Mm -hmm. And her uncle helped him with it because mm -hmm. Emerson's eyes was going like that. John came. Almost every afternoon, they sat in my house. Emerson had his own houses, and uh, he uh, he uh, he would help him with to see and things like that. And they had a wonderful time. And they gave a, one to the library, and they gave one to Bates College too. Mm -hmm. That's where his uncle and Emerson were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had never never complained. He went to West, uh, Westbrook College. It used to be, a, it was all girls at one time. Oh, uh, that you were you and Eve? Wasn't it St. Francis? St. Francis, you're right. Yeah. His mother sent there. She made very little money in the summertime, but she did get very nice people. Um, and uh, it was a nice woman talking to the ladies. He went to St. Francis? Oh, yes, yeah. And he took saxophone, saxophone. He and his two, sis two sisters that he had learned to play the piano. And he come home to one day with a note to his mother. They got somebody at the school, wrote a letter and said, you have to take the children out of here because we don't, those days they said, do Negroes. But he kept, yeah. He kept uh, it up until the day he died. He still played the trombone at the churches and things. Alan, do you remember any of the people that stayed at the big house? Any of the performers? Uh, I'm trying, oh, all of the band. Uh, Duke Ellington. In fact, Duke Ellington finished a song at Emerson's big, we call it the big house. Mm -hmm. We had an old piano in there. And uh, he, uh, uh, Duke Ellington finished one of his songs. I don't remember what it was. Duke Ellington, any of the, uh, because they came to Old Orchard to play at the pier, but they weren't allowed to eat there and they weren't allowed to stay there. So Emma's mother opened the house, served them three meals, and kept them as long as they wanted to stay. 
and they'd come and they'd finish at midnight and go home to up to his house, his mother's house. She'd cook them and did they. Then she'd serve them three meals a day. And every table, not plastic table, <laughs> and then tablecloth and napkins and bath every meal. His sisters had to wash and iron them and place them back on the tables. And they did. Oh, W.E.B. Du Bois. You know who that is? Okay. What did he, can you tell you what he did? Am I talking too much? Okay. <laughs> he came to stay at the house, and all he did was complain. W.E.B. When it came to pay, for his uh, food and his rent and everything. Mm -hmm. He went to pay Mrs. Cummings and she said, I'm not taking it. And he said, what do you mean you're not taking it? She says, you've complained ever since you, had, you were here. Mm -hmm. I kept you and I treated you like everybody else, but you didn't treat us right. I don't want your money and don't come back again. You know these things are true. You, you knew Catherine, you've heard them over the years. Can you think of his? Lena Horne was in your guest book? I, I'm not sure about Lena Horne. I, I know, I know, remember the band leaders. That's yeah. This is reading a manual. So when you two went out on dates, what did you do? Where did you go? Uh, not much. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> because I had a mother who was very strict. She loved him and he loved her. Yeah. And parents did. But I was the last one left at home, so I stayed there and took care of her. Oh, good for and believe me, we didn't live together until he got sick, and then I had to, he got diabetes. And, and I turned my son room into a little hospital room and kept them there until they went to the hospital. Did you guys ever go dancing? What did? did you guys ever go dancing? Um, not much. Movies? Oh yeah, movies, you know, men's movies. I didn't like them. I'd say, oh yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> we'll start to get over. <laughs> Did you listen to music? Yes, and he loved music, but not this hip hop stuff. You know? <laughs> he was a old fashioned songs a whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Of, uh, Elizabeth's family, she and her sister and her brother. <laughs> and Emerson spoiled them too. And one day he come down and he, uh, he bought a swimming pool for the kids, you know. And of course the kids right away got in the swimming pool. And we're, I'm saying, get out of there, you got new shoes on you. Let them alone. My mother said a kid can play as long as I'm not doing anything wrong. Let them walk in their shoes and when they wear them out, I'll buy some more. That was the attitude he had through the whole life. Yeah. <laughs> These are poor Catherine and her brother. Missed a lot of Emerson's good sayings and all because they moved out when the kids were little and they were up in Limerick. But right now she's by, she's by both. <laughs> Takes care of me morning, noon, and night and everything. So, anything else, girls? God, I think I read it. I <laughs> hope I'd see you girls on television on the news sometime. <laughs> you could be with some of those big shots that give all the bad news out, you know? <laughs> I'll say I knew those girls, right? They interviewed me once. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know some of those pretty girls on uh, TV. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll fit right in, right? So were you always such a snazzy dresser? Well, I was in that business. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I was a buyer for stores. So I used to go to New York once a month. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I had a good life. I hurt for him when they hurt him, but I still had a good life. He never wanted to travel, especially, he was not a bitter man. I'll go with a, a name that I don't want to mention in town, somebody that was official or something. Treated him very, very bad. He never said a word against that person. So if that's what they think, my mother said, hold your head up high and do good things. That's, that's what he did, believe me. Yeah. When you come Christmas time, 
would come to the house. The kids would look for, they wouldn't look for Santa Claus, they'd look for any to come to the house. He'd come in loaded down with toys and all. Well, we're not talking about him, we're talking about old Dr. Wright. That's okay, we love everything. One day he told the kids, he, 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 I gotta tell you girls gotta listen to this one. He used to tell the girls, uh, his students, that he liked to get up. Oh, I gotta show him my, uh, Officer Kelly, would you mind coming around this way, please, one second? I just wanna show him something. And I'll tell you the, the, my story. Would you come over? She wants to tell a story with you and Lucy. I'm over as well. I've done my time. No, but you got one more. Nope. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you could stand behind it. Sure. Look at the front yeah. of my walker. Mm -hmm. I saw that when it came in. Oh, that's mine. That was my father's. 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 My Oh no! Oh, I have my iPad. Oh boy, did I Do you remember any of the teachers? What, darling? Do you remember any of the teachers?